So bouncing redox reactions is going to be a little bit more difficult than bouncing other reactions that we've seen. And the reason why is some of our species is going to be changing its charge because we're moving electrons around. Something's going to become more positive. Something's going to become more negative. And so that makes things a little bit more difficult. So my recommendation to you is, is if you identify something as being a redox reaction, try not to do it by hand. So when we were talking about acid-base reactions, because only a hydrogen was being moved, you could kind of you know, eyeball it and come up with the answer. You can't do that with redox reactions. You have to use these specific steps that we're going to give you in order to balance it. So we're gonna do this in what's called acidic conditions. Uh, it just means uh, how we deal with H+. There's another variation called uh, bouncing under basic conditions. We will talk about that in a different video, but really this is the first way you want to look at it. So bouncing a redox reaction in an acid solution. So the first thing you want to do is separate the overall reaction into the two half reactions, the oxidation and reduction. So there's going to be species in there. You're looking for the same species on the left-hand side of the arrow as on the right-hand side of the arrow. And once you do this, you bounce the other atoms in this order. So you bounce anything other than hydrogen and oxygen. So if I got an iron, you know, I bounce the number of irons on the left-hand side of the arrow and the right-hand side of the arrow. So you deal with that. And then you bounce oxygens, but you don't bounce it by putting an O. You bounce the number of oxygens on each side of the arrow by putting water inside of there. And then you bounce the number of hydrogens by putting H+. And this is why we call this uh, bouncing under acidic conditions. Once you're done with that, we're going to need to bounce the charge. So there's going to be lots of positively and negatively charged things in there. I need to bounce the charge using electrons. And this is the tricky bit, and we'll make a big deal about it. This is the only way that I can bounce charge is by um, adding electrons to either the left-hand side of the arrow or the right-hand side of the arrow. So with this, when you get to this point, you're going to have two half reactions that are bounced. And then we need to add those two half reactions together, but we want to get rid of the electrons. So this is one of the rules. If you bounce a full redox reaction, and if you have electrons left over, you have done something wrong. So I need to combine these two bounced half reactions together in such a way that the number of electrons on the left-hand side of the arrow and the number of electrons on the right-hand side of the arrow will be the same. So here we're looking at the least common denominator of uh, the two numbers of electrons. Then once I combine those two things together, I simplify the reaction by removing species that are on the same side. So here there might be some species you can remove, but if you've done it correctly, you're going to be needing to get rid of electrons at the very least. So in step five here, at the very least, you're gonna be getting rid of the same number of electrons on the left-hand side of the arrow as you do on the right-hand side of the arrow. If that's not true, um, you've done something wrong, or after you, you simplify, you have some electrons left over, you've done something wrong. Because in a redox reaction, the electrons are hidden. So here's an example of a redox reaction. There are electrons being moved in there, but we can't see them. We have to break into the half reactions to actually see the electrons that are being moved. So let's bounce this overall redox reaction. So the first thing you want to do is break it into the two half reactions. And so really what we're looking at is species other than oxygen and hydrogen. So here we have a manganese on the left, a manganese on the right. That's going to be one half reaction a bromine on the left and a bromine on the right, that's gonna be my other half reaction. So, you know, there's gonna be more oxygens, electrons and things like that. We're gonna add that during our balancing. So here I'm gonna take the first one. I'm gonna be going from uh, this manganese to manganese two plus. So we look at that, this is one of my half reactions at this point, I don't know if it's an oxidation or reduction. We have to do some steps. So the first thing you want to do is bounce anything other than oxygen and hydrogen. So in this case, it's the manganese. So I have one manganese on the left, one manganese on the right. Okay, so it's balanced. Then you want to bounce the number of oxygens by adding water. So when I look at this, on the left-hand side of the arrow, I have four oxygens. On the right-hand side of the arrow, I have zero. So I need to add four oxygens on the right-hand side of the arrow but I don't add the oxygens, it's just, oh, I add them as water. So I add four waters 
to the right hand side of the arrow. You notice in doing this, this is changing the number of hydrogens, but that's okay because we balance hydrogens in the last step. So starting with this, so we've balanced the number of oxygens, now I wanna balance the number of hydrogens. So when I look at it, zero hydrogens on the left-hand side of the arrow, on the right-hand side of the arrow, I got four waters, two hydrogens per water, so I have eight hydrogens on the right-hand side, so I need to add eight hydrogens on the left-hand side. So when we say adding hydrogens in this case, we add H plus. And now comes the tricky part. So I'll tell you the rest of this is not that bad. It's putting in the right number of electrons. This is where it can get a little tricky because you're adding positives and negatives. And then the idea is you need to bring the charge down. The only way that I have to bounce the number of electrons, I'm gonna bounce the charge is by changing the number of electrons, that's it. So this is the point where you wanna take a second and make sure you do it correctly because this is where most people tend to make mistakes. So what I do is I look at the total charge on the left-hand side of the arrow and the right-hand side of the arrow before I start adding electrons. So on the left-hand side, I have eight H plus, so I have a positive H or positive eight, but I also have one negatively charged species. So instead of plus eight on the left-hand side, I have plus seven as the total charge on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, my waters are neutral, but I have a plus two manganese. So on the right hand side of the arrow, I have plus two. So I have plus seven on one side, plus two on the other side. I need to even those charges out. And I can only do this by making things more negative because I am adding electrons to it. So if this is the left hand side of the arrow is plus seven, the right hand side of the arrow is plus two. I need to add five electrons to the left hand side of the arrow. That'll drop my plus seven to plus two because I have a, um, five minuses. So I balance the charge by adding electrons. I f add five electrons to the left-hand side, and this is my balanced half reaction. And then more importantly, this gives me some pretty important information that I wanna consider before I go forward, that this is re reaction is gaining electrons. So this is my reduction half reaction. So remember inside of here, we're breaking up two half reactions. I'm expecting one to be a reduction, the other one to be an oxidation. So in this reaction, because we are putting electrons into it, it is my reduction half reaction. So this means uh, the manganese is being reduced because if you go in there and look at the oxidation state, you're gonna see that it's changing. If you actually go in there and look at the charge of manganese, it's um, changing. And then my MnO4 minus is called the oxidate, oxidizing agent. So because it's being reduced, it's called the oxidizing agent. So because I know this is my reduction half reaction, the next half reaction had better be an oxidation because I need a reduction and an oxidation. So when I go back to my original reaction up here, I have a bromine on the left and a bromine on the right. So that's gonna be the beginning point of my other half reaction. So the first thing I wanna do is balance for atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. So in this case, bromine. I have two bromines on the right, one bromine on the left. So I'm gonna put a two out in front of there. I then you know, balance oxygen using water. Well, I don't have any oxygens, so that's good. I then balance hydrogens using H plus. I don't have any hydrogens, that's good but now I need to bounce the charge. So once again, I take a second because this is where things get tricky. I, on the right-hand side of the arrow, I have a charge of zero. So my bromine is neutral. So on the right-hand side of the arrow, the charge is zero. On the left-hand side of the arrow, I have a minus one bromine, but I have two of those. So the total charge is negative two. So I need to even these out. I need for the charge to be the same on the left-hand side of the arrow as it is on the right-hand side of the arrow and I can only do that by adding electrons. I can only bring the charge down. So if the left-hand side of the arrow is minus two, the right-hand side of the arrow is zero, I must bring the zero down to negative two by adding two electrons to it. And so here in this half reaction, um, electrons are being produced. This means that this is an oxidation and loss of electrons is oxidation. That's good because my first half reaction was a reduction. So it's looking pretty good here. So this is my oxidation half reaction, my bromine, 
is losing electrons and in this case Br- minus is called the reducing agent. So I now have my two bounced half reactions and now what I need to do is combine those back together and at least get rid of the electrons. So in my first half reaction, my reduction half reaction, I had five electrons involved in it. In my second one, I had two electrons involved in it. I need to be able to combine these two together so that the number of electrons on the left-hand side of the arrow and the right-hand side of the arrow are equal so I can cancel them out. So I want to know what the least common denominator is of 2 and 5, and that's 10. So my, my first reaction, my reduction, I want to multiply by 5. So I want to get to 10. Uh, in order to do that, I multiply my first reaction by 2. So literally, I just go through and multiply the stoichiometric coefficients by 2. And then for my second reaction, my oxidation reaction, I need to multiply by 5. So we want to get to 10. So you can kind of see this. I want the number of electrons in both half reactions to be equal to each other. And so in this case, it's 10. I literally just go through and multiply my stoichiometric coefficients by 5. And so you can see I have 10 electrons on the left-hand side of the arrow, 10 electrons on the right-hand side of the arrow. I then combine the two reactions together. So literally I say what's on the left-hand side of the arrow of this reaction, left-hand side of the arrow in this reaction. I put all those species on the left-hand side of the arrow of my overall reaction. I do the same thing on the right. And when I combine them together, I, I get this overall reaction, but we're not done yet. You need to simplify this reaction. And by that, I mean it goes back to the idea that the arrow in a reaction is kind of like an equal sign. So if I have the same thing on the left as I do on the right, I can cancel those two things out. And I say, are, is there anything on the left and the right-hand side of the arrow? So when I look at this, yes, I have 10 electrons on the left, 10 electrons on the right. I can cancel those out. And that's something that needs to happen. At the very least in a redox reaction, your number of electrons on the left-hand side of the arrow and the right-hand side of the arrow should be equal to each other such that we cancel them out. If this doesn't happen, you've done something wrong. Sometimes there might be like some H plus or something that you can cancel out um, that happens sometimes. So if, so if there's anything else that you can use to simplify the reaction, but at the very least, the number of electrons needs to go away. So I get rid of this 10 electrons on the left-hand side of the arrow, this 10 electrons on the right-hand side of my arrow, and overall what I get is my overall bounced redox reaction. So just remember, when I'm done, if I have any electrons left over, I have done something wrong in this bouncing reaction.